Hello everybody, today we're going to be setting up Jupyter Notebook to work with Windows Subsystem for Linux. To get started, let's go into the Cortana search bar and look for Turn Windows Features On or Off. Scroll down to Windows Subsystem for Linux and check the box. Then we're going to restart our computer. Uh, I'm going to pause the video and meet you back here in a minute. Now that we've got WSL enabled, we're going to pick a distribution to work with. So let's go back to the Windows Store and look for Ubuntu. You're going to want to select the one that doesn't have a version number listed. That's always going to give you the most recent long-term stable release. So go ahead and install. Then after it's done installing, you can just launch. And this is going to take a couple of minutes, so I'm going to pause the video and come back when it's when everything's done. Now that Ubuntu is installed, we want to type in a username and password. So go ahead and do that. Great. I'll just clear this to keep it clean. The next thing we want to do after putting in our username and password is update all of the system dependencies. Uh, to do that, we're going to use sudo apt update and sudo apt upgrade. We can copy using control C, but to paste into the bash terminal, the default is actually to right click. So instead of control V to paste, just make sure you um, do a right click and press enter. So then we're going to use the password we just made. And this is going to go through all of our system dependencies and make sure that um, anything that can be updated is flagged. And then after everything is flagged, we can use sudo apt upgrade to actually download and install um, anything that was identified. Let's just give this a second to finish updating. Great, and then we want to right click to paste sudo apt upgrade and then press yes and enter. All right, this is going to take a minute, so I'll come back when, when this is all finished upgrading. And now that we're done, we can go ahead and clear the output again to clean things up. Now we're going to want to head over into the main Windows file system. That's because WSL tools work in Windows, but if we used Windows tools like Excel or something on uh, files that are in the subsystem, it'll cause them to be corrupted. So everything that we do is going to be uh, on files in the Windows file system. So in order to move over there, we want to change directory into the um, WSL root, which we can do by saying cd forward slash. And then we can see all of the directories in the root folder by pressing ls. One of those folders is going to be mount. So let's change directories to mount. And from there, we can see that the C drive is actually in there. So if we change directories to C, that's the root C drive for our Windows file system. Now, uh, we want to find in the C drive where we keep our Python folder. So just go to the file explorer and this is the Windows file explorer. Uh, this is where I keep my Python projects. So I'm going to select the address bar and copy this whole path. And then from the notepad, I'm going to paste. And when we change directories, we can actually get rid of the C um, here because we're already in the C drive over in the subsystem. 
we're also going to want to change all of the backslashes from Windows into forward slashes because if you notice the Linux file structure uses forward slashes so we can select this whole thing and press control H and then move from backslashes to forward slashes and replace all. Now we can select this bit, copy and right click, to, oops, we actually want to change directory first. So I want to say CD for change directory, then put quotes around this path, right click and paste in the path to your Python folder and end quotes. So now we're actually in the folder that we do our Python work, uh, but we don't want to do that maneuver every time we want to do some coding using WSL. So let's set up an alias that'll help us uh, just every time we log into our shell, it'll, it'll take us to the same location. So let's copy the destination here that we're going to want to set our alias to and just paste it over here into our notepad for safekeeping. And we can also clear this out to just clean things up a bit. Okay, so now we're going to actually implement the alias. And in order to do that, we're going to edit the bash profile using the nano text editor. Uh, you'll notice that we're editing uh, the bash profile and in other Ubuntu tutorials, you might notice it's asking you to edit bash RC. That's because Windows Subsystem for Linux uses what's called a login shell. In most Ubuntu dedicated Ubuntu uh, machines, the only time the user interacts with the login shell uh, is when they actually log into their computer and use their username and password. That's a little bit different for um, WSL. The upshot is anytime you see a tutorial asking you to edit um, bash rc uh, since you're using wsl you actually want to edit bash profile instead so uh, we're going to go ahead in here and it's an empty file for now but we're going to take this alias coding time so here alias is actually the command coding time is uh, just a user defined name so it could be coding time you could name it anything else you want it doesn't matter um, and then what it's doing is changing directories to whatever file path we want to set it to so let's select this um, path that's in our windows file system where we keep our python projects and just right click to paste um, so now uh, this as is isn't going to bring us to the Python folder in our Windows system, file system, every time we open up a shell. This is just going to allow us to type coding time. And instead of typing out this whole thing, change directory, mount, C users all the way to Python, we can just type coding time and it'll take us there. But we actually want to take it one step further. And every time we log in, we want, um, we want to just go straight to the Windows file system. So in order to do that, we just type in the alias we made. And so every time this shell opens, it's going to run these two lines of code before it does anything else. And so it's going to set up the alias, and then it's going to take us to the coding time uh, directory. And to get out of here, we want to first we want to write the file. So this caret O is actually the caret stands for control. So we press control O and then press enter to actually write the file. You just wrote two lines. So after that, you can get out of here by pressing control X uh, to exit. So here we go. And now that we have our bash profile edited, we want to activate the bash profile because that file has been written, but it hasn't been activated yet so it's just it's lying dormant so we want to tell um, WSL hey this folder this file is written and we want to use it um, so now every time we open the bash 
or at the bash uh, terminal, it's going to take us straight into the Python directory that we just created. So I'm going to go ahead and close that and then I'm going to open up a new bash terminal to make sure that everything is working as intended. And perfect, it looks like we are in the Python folder of our Windows file system. So great, everything's working the way we want it to. The next thing we want to do is actually install pip and python. So in order to do that, I like to use pyenv for a uh, few reasons that are um, probably not in the scope of the video, but after we're done with this, we're going to have um, pip and python set up and ready to go. So uh, just copy this command that's right out of the pyenv installer GitHub page so we can do that and press enter. And this should just take a second for it to finish. Great. And now it's asking us to uh, edit the bash profile. And you see here, like I mentioned earlier, they're saying use bash RC. That would be fine if this wasn't a login shell, but we actually need to edit um, the bash profile again. So over here, I've uh, in and this is down in the description. I have uh, the command that they're asking us to set up. So copy bash profile nano bash profile. Oops. Copy this paste it in here and then down beneath coding time we can actually just copy and paste this and then we want to press control O again to write out press enter so it's actually written and then you'll see it wrote six lines of code control uh, control X to exit and then we can just clear this to neaten things up again Oh, right, and we also want to activate that bash profile because we want that to be read every time we open up bash. Okay, now we just want to make sure that pyenv is up to date. So try that out. This is out of the pyenv documentation. This is just going to um, set things up so we can install Python and pip. And after I press enter here, it's going to ask for the password. All right, and this actually takes a little while. So while everything is downloading, installing, I'm going to pause the video, but I'll, I'll be back after that's done. Now that pyenv is updated, let's clean up this output and install a version of Python. I'm going to go with 3.66, but you can install it other, whatever version of Python you want. And this is going to take a little while to download and install, so we'll meet back after that's done. Now that Python 3.6.6 is installed, we just want to tell pyenv to make that the global Python that we're going to use. And that's actually it for setting up Python. So we can close out of here and open up a new terminal. And we can see we're in the Python folder as expected. Um, so great, and that leads us into just setting up Jupyter Notebooks. Since Jupyter Lab has actually um, replaced Jupyter Notebooks, um, we're going to install Jupyter Lab, which includes the old style Jupyter Notebooks and also a newer style IDE. So pip, oops, pip install Jupyter Lab. Jupyter Lab is one word. Go ahead and run this and this will take a few minutes so 
We'll see you when this is done. Great, it looks like everything worked. So it, it yelled at us to install uh, or upgrade pip. So let's do that now too. So we'll just copy this and paste it into the command line. Oops. Copy, paste, there we go. And I'm not sure if this takes a long time or not. So we'll see. Nope, it didn't take long at all, it's all done. Great, so let's clean things up a little bit. Great, and now we're gonna check out how our installation of Jupyter Lab worked. So we can try Jupyter Notebook and it's gonna give us this, um, this token. Uh, notice that it says no web browser found. We could not locate a runnable browser. That's because WSL actually doesn't have access to GUIs. Um, so one of the nice things about Jupyter is that um, it's running uh, like as a local server. So since WSL shares ports with Windows, we can actually open up our Edge browser, paste that token in there, and we are in our uh, Jupyter Notebook that running on our Linux subsystem but using the GUI from our Windows Windows system. Um, let's just create a sample file to make sure things are working as intended. And here let's try installing just some random package. How about US address and then run this great so it looks like everything's working as intended we can try print hello world great so that that finishes everything up feel free to leave any questions you have in the comment section and don't forget to give a thumbs up if this video helped you out.